Hello everyone. This is our snapshot to show you the whereabouts, well-being and needs of the southern damselfly in Dorset. This picture owes much to the work of dedicated ecologists, land managers and fellow enthusiasts who share our fascination for this rare animal. All the analyses and opinions that follow are very much our own, except where stated. The southern damselfly was given its two-part scientific name of Coinagrian mercuriale by the 19th century German entomologist Susan von Charpentier. For Charpentier, the black marking on the second segment of the male abdomen reminded him of the graphic symbol for the planet Mercury. I often say that the Mercury symbol looks a lot like a ballet dancer with their arms raised. When looking for this diagnostic mark on individuals in the field, we often see it can vary in shape. The southern damselfly is the smallest of the British and Irish blue-bodied damselflies. It lives in localised colonies of a few hundred individuals, and often in far fewer numbers. The southern damselfly is protected from willful disturbance in law by the Wildlife and Countryside Act of 1981. Those who seek to handle it require a licence from Natural England to do so. Southern damselfly larvae develop over two years. Adults emerge from the water from mid-May to August, with peak numbers in June and July. It breeds in unshaded neutral and alkaline streams, ditches, flushes and fens, habitats it shares here in Britain with small red and scarce blue-tailed damselflies. Adult southern damselflies are weak flyers and you will see them at and below knee level flitting and perching. They spend a fair amount of time resting or foraging away from watercourses in nearby heathland or water meadow vegetation. Weak in flight and largely sedentary, the southern damselfly is a poor disperser and is certainly not mercurial by nature. In fact, field studies show that most southern damselflies will only stray between 500 and 1000 metres from home. The southern damselfly has a fair range but is rare and highly localised. It is distributed across northwest Africa and is still present but declining in the Low Countries, Germany and Italy. Here in the UK, the southern damselfly is essentially at the northwestern extent of its range, where we find it in mild, southwestern coastal districts, usually at heights below 100 metres. Our UK populations are found in Wales, namely on Anglesey, on Gower and in the Preseli Hills. In England, it is found in Exmoor in Devon. There is also a colony at Cothill Fen in Oxfordshire. Hampshire populations are strong, with colonies in the New Forest and along the Itchen and Test rivers. And, of course, there are colonies in Dorset. My pale red triangle on the map outlines the location of Dorset on England's south coast. It has disappeared from the Brecon Beacons in Wales and from Cornwall and Somerset in England. Why such declines and losses? Extensive post-war studies in Europe and Britain show the southern damselfly to be stenotopic. This means it is a specialist species tolerating a very narrow and particular suite of environmental conditions. So, what are those conditions? The southern damselfly prefers warm, unshaded waters that stay above 10 degrees centigrade. We sometimes see dark peat or silt deposits on the stream bed which may help to hold in the warmth. Water should be clean and have a slow or moderate flow rate. Flow should be continuous. The water will have passed through or over alkaline limestone or clays, creating a preferred pH for the damselfly of between 6.5 
and 7.5. The Southern Damselfly also needs high concentrations of dissolved oxygen. Soft aquatic plants are needed for egg laying and larval shelter. Bog pondweed and marsh St John's wort are favoured. Tall, rigid plant stems above water are used for emergence and perching. There needs to be vegetation nearby too for roosting, foraging and shelter. What ecological changes can put southern damselfly colonies under pressure? Reduced levels of grazing by cattle or ponies will lead to channel shading and reduced water flow. Water pollution, abstraction and drought are issues too. Overenthusiastic aquatic plant clearance can have an impact on eggs, larvae and shelter. Even minor levels of habitat fragmentation caused by scrub, hedges and roads will impact on such a poor disperser. So what about UK numbers? Well the BDS tells us the southern damselfly has suffered a catastrophic decline of 30% between 1960 and 2000 in the UK and has gone extinct or is close to extinction in seven European countries. But what about current numbers? The UK's Joint Nature Conservation Committee currently states, quote, it appears to be present in low numbers at most of its localities, but more recently the decline may have ceased. It adds, the fairly stable distribution in the southwest of the UK appears to constitute a major European stronghold of the species. These encouraging words may simply reflect an abstract regional presence. What is the granular reality for the damselfly in small, dynamic habitats? Whatever that true picture is, it remains classified as endangered on the British IUCN Red List and is classed as near threatened on both the European and global Red Lists. As you can see from this long list, the southern damselfly is well protected, at least on paper. Indeed, designations and protection for this damselfly have resulted in the Perbic Heaths being granted special area of conservation status. We in the UK cannot be complacent. Real world habitat degradation can be swift. So we must continue to exercise the precautionary principle with active land management and rigorous monitoring. So what about the recent history of data collection here in the county of Dorset? There were a few scattered sightings of the southern damselfly in the 1970s and the 1980s, but it was only in the 1990s that any regular recording was undertaken. There have been four main phases of recording activity across the years. The first was in the 1990s, led by Evelyn D. V. Prendergast at multiple sites. He was a keen naturalist who had retired from the military. The MOD range site west of Corfe Castle at Povington was its main focus of activity. The second phase was between 2001 and 2005 and undertaken by RSPB ecologist and southern damselfly expert Chris Deek. This was across multiple sites, including that of the Blue Pool estate near Wareham. The third phase of recording activity, 2014 to 2016, saw Chris Deek being joined by a professional freshwater ecologist Robert Aquilina. This work was mainly focused at the Fen Arm of Hartland Moor and back at Povington. The most recent phase ran from 2018 until July this year. The National Back from the Brink project oversaw comprehensive heathland surveys by a team of volunteers across all sites. Professional habitat restoration often with machinery, formed part of this phase too. Only one site, 
that of Creech Heath seems to have been regularly monitored. This has been done by the Amphibian and Reptile Conservation Trust who manage the site. They have an almost continuous data set from the 1990s. We've begun to review post-1990 Southern Damselfly data for key Purbeck sites. These numbers offer a complex, challenging set of patterns and trends, and more time is needed to review these data before we can paint a full picture of loss, stability and resilience. We have to say we think the rates and extent of southern damselfly recording have sometimes been uneven here in the county of Dorset. This has resulted in incomplete or artificially low counts. However, some trends can be seen and we offer them here. Povington. Although created artificially by the flooding of mires from a clay works, this Ministry of Defence site once had the highest density of southern damselfly in Purbeck. This was due to its rate of channel flow and high levels of grazing. However, when pumping stopped, the habitat dried out. The Povington population is now considered to be extinct. Chris Deek addressed this site in his 2018 paper given to the spring meeting of the BDS. You can also read a detailed account of the site given by David Chelmick in a recent edition of the BDS Journal. Our second reading of the data focuses on Heartland Moor. The alkaline fan arm of Heartland Moor between Wareham and Corfe Castle is managed by the National Trust. It is the stronghold of the species in Purbeck. Here there is a stable population, probably the only one in the area. Recent tree clearance and a careful grazing regime using red Ruby Devon cattle has seen a slight increase in numbers. Cattle will be there again in 2022. The effectiveness of this grazing needs to be closely monitored. Creech Heath. Creech lies to the west of Corfe Castle. It has a small but significant population and recording has been regular. Unfortunately, lack of management did lead to a perilous decline from a peak of 200 adults down to 20. Recent measures with machinery have restored the habitat and there has been an encouraging threefold increase in numbers. Corfe Common. Corfe Common East and West had a small but significant population in the early 2000s. This has declined, probably due to a lack of grazing. There has, however, been recent site management here. Rangers worked for two days with chainsaws and brush cutters, clearing a three to four metre wide swathe along the main channel for about 200 metres on Corf Common East. Stober Heath and Three Barrows, northwest of Corf Castle. There have been occasional sightings here in recent years. Rush cutting and willow and alder felling at these sites may prove beneficial, but rush does tend to grow back quickly, so further work may be required. I'll briefly mention two other sites. The first is that at Blue Pool. This once had a decent population, but it now looks to be in decline. This could recover with suitable management measures, and we should all be reading the detailed 2021 Habitat Assessment Report from Chris Deek. And finally, a site near Christchurch. It is right on the edge of the Dorset and Hampshire BC border, the Vice County border. This is home to a small population of southern damselfly, which we think is probably related to new forest populations. Collaborative work is needed here to assess numbers, habitat health and give conservation advice. I now want to say just a little bit about connectivity in Purbeck. Safeguarding the flagship Heartland Moor colony is critical in ensuring the continued presence of the Southern Damselfly in Purbeck. With additional clearance work and systematic grazing, 
smaller satellite sites may become reconnected to heartland. This could in time increase gene exchange across the Purbeck metapopulation. So the aim then is essentially to link Creech Heath and Blue Pool populations of the southern damselfly via the Three Barrows and Stober Heath sites. It's a kind of a stepping stone approach. Here in this photograph we see some relatively recent mechanical clearance of the Three Barrows site which is hopefully opening it up once again to the southern damselfly and this will in time allow it to become a midpoint between the established heartland populations and populations further to the west. Here in this photograph you can see the results of some fairly recent rush cutting at Stober Heath, one of the stepping stones in question. To provide these stepping stones and wider mobility, extensive habitat suitability assessments have been undertaken by Chris Deek. These assessments set out the hands-on management needed to reduce shade, increase emergent vegetation and reduce eutrophication. Chris Deek has also set out detailed proposals for the clearance of old and potentially new sites in Purbeck. Here's a photograph of one such locale, the southeast outflow mire of the National Trust's Scotland Pond. What else is being done for the southern damselfly in Dorset? Concerns raised about declining populations of the southern damselfly led a number of stakeholders to form a Dorset-focused southern damselfly steering group. It currently consists of members from the British Dragonfly Society, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, the National Trust and the Amphibian and Reptile Conservation Trust. Of great significance too is the creation of a 3,300 hectare super nature reserve. This is a collection of previously separate reserves now woven together in the 20 year Wild Perfect Partnership Plan. It is a bold approach with hands on bespoke management for the Southern Damselfly taking place, which runs alongside a more process led approach designed to create a positive ecological dynamic. The new Purbeck Heaths Nature Reserve has already formulated an ambitious grazing policy and a large scale grazing unit has been marked out for the west of the huge reserve. Here we see Jake Hancock feeding young Red Ruby Devon cattle. These animals will be led to Heartland Moor in April to do their bit for the southern damselfly. There they will be trampling, rooting, wallowing and grazing. We'll all watch this with interest. The creation of the Purbeck Heaths Nature Reserve in 2020 inspired the Dorset Dragonfly Group to create a three-year Purbeck Dragonfly project. Here, as part of that project, we see Andrew Brown leading a recent National Trust Rangers workshop at Heartland Moor. Over the winter, project discussions will be had on how southern damselfly numbers can be monitored alongside the recording for all of the Perbic Odonata. To find out more about the project and about the group, please visit the Dorset Dragonflies website. The URL for that website appears on this slide. So things are beginning to happen. But what of the future? The key to the health of southern damselfly populations in Dorset as a whole, and in Purbeck in particular, is surely going to be a collective ambition. County dragonfly recorder Andrew Brown and I would ask for coordination and cooperation between professionals and volunteers. How exactly can this be done? Well, we suggest the following. Regular meetings of the steering group to develop a strategic and coordinated approach. Consistent survey effort across all known sites with an agreed recording strategy and rigorous protocol in place so that data is robust year on year. This is really important. And of course, it's not enough just to count the Southern Damselfly. 
we have to monitor the habitat too. We should be measuring flow rate, pH and oxygen levels. We need to monitor vegetation structure and the impact of new grazing regimes. We recommend using the amazingly detailed work of Chris Deek in his habitat accessibility assessments as a template for all future practical management work at known sites and potential new sites. Funding. Efforts need to be made to get a centrally organised fund together. This will of course not be easy, but probably necessary for long-term and future management costs. Recent funding from the Doily Cart Charitable Trust has been put to good use here in Purbeck. All of this should be underpinned by regular and effective communication and cooperation between landowners and managers to share challenges and successes. And lastly, conversations with those recently responsible for practical work for the Southern Dams of Lyon, Pembrokeshire might be usefully undertaken too. Hopefully, in this way, the Southern Dams of Lyon will be kept well back from the edge in Dorset for the foreseeable future. This synthesis is the result of a lot of generous input from many fellow dragonfly devotees. Andrew Brown and I wish to thank the following. Rob Aquilina, Terry Bagley, Adrian Bicker, Ben Cook and Dr Sophie Lake. Special thanks go to Chris Deek, RSPB ecologist and Southern Damselfly expert. His dedicated work for the Southern Damselfly in Dorset is truly inspiring. Oh, and of course, thank you for listening. Andrew and I will do our very best to answer your questions in the Q&A session taking place very, very shortly.